Desiree yeah. Woods in the building. Welcome back to the show. How you feel today? I'm doing all right. How about you? Uh, I'm down here in the middle of nowhere, Texas. I, I think <laughs> I'm in. I, I don't even know. I, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't even know where I'm at. One one side is the damn desert. The other side is like a small city that I'm going through. But you know, it is what it what is. What interstate are you on? Uh, I'm on. Uh, I'm on US 287 in Texas. Oh. Okay, I used to drive that all the time. Yeah. Fort Worth to Amarillo. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, well, so what's going on with you? How, well, how, how's trucking yeah. treating you? I'm actually not on the road right now. I'm at home, mm -hmm. and I'm glad of it. <laughs> it's a bad storm coming in through California, crossing over into Utah and stuff. And I'm in Las Vegas, and it's going to be snow in the mountains here 18 inches today so in las vegas um and the, the mountains there's a, there's a actually a mountain uh one hour from here that's five thousand feet mm -hmm. elevation and yeah they got snowboarding up there so you you can go snowboarding and play in the snow if you live in las vegas in God. just an hour a lot of people don't know that. Man, snowing yeah. in Las Vegas. Yeah, not down to the ground, you know, not down here in the bottom valley, but we can see it. I can see it from my window right now that it's in St. George and it's up on Mount Charleston. And I know that Donner Pass in northern Nevada is getting hit hard. Oh, man. Right that, now. that Donner, that, it's, 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 kind of, it's kind of awkward that you mentioned Donner's Pass let's 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 get into it man so <laughs> okay. i'm just gonna start by saying that shout out to the she trucking trucking group um look man i i, I see you ladies coming into this business y'all happy to get your license and um and you know y'all Y'all, y'all, y'all just don't know. To be honest with you, to be totally honest, y'all really don't know what y'all getting into. Y'all really don't. You know, you, you only knowing what the schools or what the trucking schools or the trucking companies is only telling you. There's this mm -hmm. young man that didn't know how to that, that didn't know how to read any of the signs. Only drove in Texas. I did the story on him uh, two years ago. Wow. I can't believe it's it's been a whole two years that they actually, you know, took this take. I mean, took this case to court and he finally got. Um, what do you call it? He finally got uh, convicted. Sent and sentenced. Yeah. Convicted in sentence. Mm -hmm. He got convicted of the crime. Which at the time he probably didn't think it was a crime, but he got convicted of the crime and uh and he got sentenced. One hundred years plus. Mm -hmm. That means that means that when this man turns one hundred and whatever age he is now. That's when he will come out of jail. Mm -hmm. That also means that when he dies and get resurrected, he has to go right back to jail <laughs> to finish out that 100 years. Mm. Desiree, you 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 made a post in the She Trucking Trucking group, uh, you know, showing, you know, it's explaining you know, explaining the ills of what truck driving is all about. Go go ahead and uh, just you know, just give me a, a a brief cliff notes of what you of what you posted. Well, I just wanted to let drivers know. I mean, us drivers that have been around a couple of years know this story, mm -hmm. and so uh, we haven't heard about him for a while, but we all remember when it happened. So I, I just wanted to post, this is a cautionary tale because 
we have thousands of drivers, especially women drivers Mm -hmm. who are new, who do not know this story and believe that it's going to be the company's fault. And so I just, when I saw it on another page, everybody dogpiling on to this narrative that he's being wronged, I was like, no, you need to understand this industry. When when this happens, you're the one going to prison. Company isn't going to be there for you. The FMCSA isn't going to be there for you. The brake manufacturer is not going to be there for you. Nobody. And you need to know this. This is the industry that you're going into. The, situ- and, uh, the situation of his truck, uh, I, I believe, because when I did the story uh, two years ago, um, it said that, you know, he only drove in Texas. He only drove mm-hmm. flat lands. You know, he wasn't, yeah. you know, he wasn't uh, he wasn't privy to, you know, to driving in the mountains, driving in different conditions. Uh, right. Look like he he got a load that uh, in one of the conversations that he had with with somebody and they put it in the news that he he initially didn't even want to take the load. Yeah, and I and that's like um, you know first of all he was twenty three at the time, so and he's from Cuba, so I don't know um, English is not his first language. And there's some people that have, you know, they have some controversial, I don't think that that, if he, he knew he'd never been to the mountains, but we all know it. we've been in situations with our boss that they want you to take a load that, you know, sometimes you got to say no. And I was trying to look up this company because there's actually a change.org petition that was put up for him that got. 71,000 signatures Mm -hmm. that said, um, you know, they shouldn't convict him that the company had a lot of out of service violations for running crappy equipment. Right, right. Well, when we decide to be commercial motor vehicle driver's license holders, we are the captain of the ship. And that's why we have the Surface Transportation Assistance Act the truck driver whistleblower act that in the conditions of where you got to stand up for yourself, you have this um, protection, but a lot of drivers don't know their rights and they don't know how to, they believe that the company would be held liable and that's just not true. You, you know, the company, you know, the company is going to get it on the back end anyway. You know, they, you know, the company, uh, you know, everybody that was involved, everybody that was, uh, you know, that unfortunately that perished, uh, they, they all come in after the company, period. Yeah. They, they're not going to go yeah. after him. Uh, they, they more so is going to go after the company. Uh, the company is going to be liable for all of that. So A- afterwards, afterwards, because they're the ones with the money for the. They're the ones with the insurance policy for the the money for the families and all of that. But with regard to somebody, you know, the driver, it, it's in our regulations. Mm-hmm. You're the one that's driving, whether you're got faulty equipment. I mean, that's why we get an out of service violation. If we know that we've got a bad break, and we operate, you're liable. If you know you don't feel comfortable with the weather situation and you drive and you have an accident, um, you're gonna be liable. But if you know there's bad weather and you tell your company and communicate to them, there's this weather is bad. We gotta, I'm stopping because this is, and they say, no, you gotta go and they fire you. You're protected under the Truck Driver uh, Whistleblower Act. That's the Surface Transportation Assistance Act. Mm-hmm. And and there's been significant cases. So my point in making the post was basically, I see a lot of these women entering trucking and they are thinking about all of the things that are really superficial. Mm-hmm. And we got like two, two big storms that are just now um, 
happening in the United States mm-hmm. for drivers that maybe started driving last March. So they've seen, you know, the best weather. And this article's timely. This case is timely that this guy is getting sentenced like this because that the company will not be able to protect him from the sentence. Of course not. Of course not. And and again, you, you're you're absolutely right. He he was the captain, and the prosecutor kind of, you know, they they, they kind of you know focus their, uh, they focus their issues on the fact that this man didn't even use, uh, you know the the, ramp. the, the ramps. Mm-hmm. Maybe you know, you know, you got to understand. He's 24. He's young. Mm-hmm. Probably just got into it. Didn't know what to do. Pushing on the brakes, pushing on the brakes. Didn't and even know. Did, didn't even know that the that you know that the ramps. Uh, maybe again couldn't read the ramps. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 it's an unfortunate, tragic, uh, unfortunate, tragic happens. You you posted, yeah. you 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 posted in the group and. You got a little bit of pushback, man. You 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 got a little <laughs> bit of pushback. Um, you 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 posted in the in a group and you made a comment about uh you know mountain driving, and you know and you said that you know he he wasn't properly uh he wasn't properly trained to drive in the mountains. Um. He say you say he wasn't properly trained to drive in the mountains. He didn't have mountain experience or anything like that. Mm-hmm. One of the commenters in the in the group says that uh that nobody nobody has mountain experience before they hit the road. Uh laugh out loud. <laughs> said they they said that any any school they they don't know if any schools does mountain driving training. Mm-hmm. Um, I I would say that, yeah. I mean, there's no schools that, especially if you're not in the area in a mountain area. But if mm-hmm. you, you know, but if you graduate the school and then you go and get with you know what a carrier that would train you, that's where you would get the quote unquote mountain training from. Especially if you're an OTR driver. What do you got to say to her? Well, I posted back right away because I got my mountain driving experience when I was with my trainer. I started in December of 2007 and it was winter. And my trainer was not a great trainer, but I did get some mountain driving experience. But the company also had a lot of videos on mountain driving. Mm-hmm. And we had to be re- retested every season. So not retested, but retrained. So um, mountain driving is something that happens frequently if you're an over-the-road driver. And winter driving are things that you should refresh your training on your own um, before you do it. You should know that's not an excuse. That um, First of all, for somebody to say, I don't know any school that does mountain driving training is like, then you should be finding out on your own. Um, The schools don't really do it. The school is just really going to get you to drive around some cones and give you a CDL. You don't really have to have a lot of skill to do that. They only give you, they they only give you enough just to get the license. Yeah. You don't know anything. So that's why you go to a training fleet that trains you in this. And then this gal wrote again that, um, well, what if she's with a doing local runs with a trainer only and he, he is not to blame. No, you're to blame because this guy, let's use him for an example. He was driving just around Texas, which is really flat around the Houston area. Mm-hmm. And then he gets a load to Colorado where he knows there's mountains. I've been to Cuba. They don't have mountains like Colorado and Cuba either. (laughs) So um, there is already apprehension on his part. 
Uh, there are some companies that run junk and they just push their drivers to go. And I see this a lot with companies that have foreign drivers because the foreign drivers don't know and they don't want any trouble. So they just do what they're told. And, um, there is a, a language barrier. I mean, there were, it was just like a, the perfect storm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you, ha- you have to be able to know how to stand up for yourself and protect your rights. But you also have to know that you can learn pretty much anything on the Internet now and you can ask other drivers, like, what do I do? What is the trick? Why is it different to do mountain driving? Uh, what do I need to know? So um, it's not it's not a, a good excuse. The LOL was like. Wow. Yeah, it kind of, okay. yeah, it kind of, it kind of, like, it, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. But rubbed these, me the wrong these, way. These is these these women, these guys too. Let's not leave out the guys. You know, you guys come into this industry with all this false pretense. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 like I said in the beginning of the episode, you guys really don't know. You got mm-hmm. the, all the stuff that you're going to learn in school. You might as well throw that shit out the window. Out the window. Because what the school ain't going to do, they're not going to prepare you for real world situations. Right. Here's, a, here's, here's a young man, 23 years old, got into a real world situations you guys over here oh hey i'm happy i'm a cdl holder I, ha, 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 it's all praise to god ha, ha, ha. but then what happened when you get into a real world situation and you here's know? another lady commenting well that's not true my company you know didn't train me they taught me only in florida and then they sent me other other to the mountains whether i wanted to go or not well then then it's on you you have to learn you got to find out you know you have to find out you can die from this job this is the top 10 most dangerous jobs to have yes, this is, is not a joke this is but not a lot, a, a, a lot of people, a, a, a lot of you guys out there. There's a lot of you guys making it out to be. I mean, I yeah. see, I see way too many dumbass TikTok videos and way too many dumbass comments. I mean, you, you guys, yeah. you, you new modern guys. You know, shout out to, shout out to the veterans that was before us that. Mm-hmm. You know, that went through the mud that didn't even have the technology. Now we got technology. Now we got now we got shit that, you know, that makes a truck driver's life easier. But still, we for you guys forget who paved the way for this shit. But now you guys is over here again, like I said, making dumbass videos, doing dumbass shit inside of your cabs. And 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 all like that, and thinking it's all it's all well and fun, it's all gravy. Yeah. It wasn't like that back in the day. You when you know, honestly, a lady. It was hard for a lady driver back in the day, back in the seventies, back in the eighties, maybe mm-hmm. late sixties. It was hard for a lady driver. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. It we was have a, we have a board member name Idella Hansen, who's been driving 50 plus years. Mm -hmm. She started driving when she was like 16 or 17 years old before they had power steering. Um, Bitsy Gomez, who drove in the late 1970s, who was one of the founding members of the Coalition of Women Truckers. Our organization was formed because of the bad training Mm -hmm. to be advocates for drivers who were going to companies, getting bad training through no fault of their own. They paid the money. They thought they were getting good training. They wanted to be good, safe drivers. And they're getting put in all of these situations. That's why we formed the organization. I am a truck driver. I experienced this firsthand. But this explosion of women that are like, give me the new truck with the pinstripes and I'm going to raise all my kids on it. 
and my fiance is on here and we got five cats and seven dogs, um, then it's hard to focus on driving when there's a lot going on. And then you have the whole, I'm going to be an influence. I'm going to be a truck driver so I can be a celebrity influencer. Mm. And it's like, um, right now it makes me a little worried because every winter, and I told this to the FMCSA when we met them in person, um, in 2019, when we see these big truck crash pile up, on the TV news, I said, could you look at the crash and go, that's a student truck using students to do team freight. That's a student fleet. That's a student fleet. That's a student fleet. I said, because I can. And I've talked to law enforcement, in fact, law enforcement in Texas. And I said, can you, can you go to a truck crash scene and recognize a student fleet from a experience level fleet? And they said, no, they can't. That's a problem. To me, that's a problem because if you can't look at a crash and see, see these are students out here doing this mm -hmm. and they're out there doing it because they're going to companies that run them through this training so freaking fast and distract them with so much bling that they don't even know you're the one that's going to go to jail. For 110 years. Let's let's talk. You don't go the extra mile to learn this stuff. Let's let's talk about that. Let's let's talk about the 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 repercussions of of truck driving because the companies the the you know the company your fleet manager could give you a load and be like yeah it, it need to be there at a certain time yada 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 and you looking at your you know you looking at your situation you see you're on the road. You see what's up. They sitting behind the desk. They sitting behind mm -hmm. a computer. They looking at Google Maps. They going by the ETA to Google Time, but they're not taking into account of traffic, weather, uh, construction, all that stuff. You are. Right. You are responsible for the truck. You are responsible for what you do out here. You, mm -hmm. you can't turn around and you, you get pulled over by DOT and they, you know, they say, hey, you know, you, you're in violation. Oh, well, I got the OK from my supervisor. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, they, they're not being you guys are not being trained. It, 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 it all Can falls back down. It all falls back down to training, proper yeah. training. That's what it all yeah. falls back down to, because if nobody don't if nobody don't tell you about it, you're not going to know about it. You're going to find out about it the hard way. Mm -hmm. And so, and sometimes that hard way can be deadly, deadly. and it can and it can end up being a hundred and ten plus years. Mm -hmm. so this man said this. This man says he's not a murderer. He ain't never heard. Mm -hmm. He ain't never heard a soul in his life. Mm -hmm. Oh, who knew that? What what he thought that when he got in the truck that day that he was going to end up in end up in a in a devastation being the cause of a devastation mm -hmm. i and i know you guys y'all gonna turn around and say oh well maybe he did you know he could have pre-tripped it he could have did this well he, he could have would have should have things happen things you know happen. like if he didn't know that you're not supposed to go you know listen when we're on flat ground we see a lot of drivers Oh, they, 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 they are they, maxing yeah, out their they, speed. Yeah, they blowing I see 75, 85 down here in Texas. Yeah. I had my trainer told me, yeah, you got to go as fast as you can. And I had to turn around and say, listen, I've been driving for 25 years in a car and you don't tailgate. You don't tailgate in a car and you don't tailgate in a truck. Mm -hmm. I don't need anybody to teach me that. I had to stand up to her. She got pissed off, but, you know, you, common sense, and unfortunately, not a lot of people have it. It's uncommon to have common sense you don't tailgate in a semi truck but the mentality in these student fleets is hurry 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 and get there so we can get another load because we're getting paid by the mile so you need to understand that the company is going to push you because a lot of these dispatchers they get paid by performance performance bonuses there's incentives for them to push you and tell you provocative words to make you move and think a hot load is good. 
you know, mm-hmm. you're going to be a hero. You're that hot load. If you get the you're hot, hot load, load there, there's on no time. hot load. The only hot load there is is a liver transplant or a heart transplant. Mm, so if you've got that load. in the box, then it ain't a hot load. I've been sent on hot loads when I was a student. Hurry, hurry, hurry and get it in the I, I've been, and I've been sent on hot loads too. Food. Old uh, Roy dog food. There is no hot load of old Roy dog food. <laughs> but they'll, they'll lead you to believe that, you know. Uh, so you you have to start looking in perspective and going, okay, I'm risking my life or, for old Roy dog food here. Like yeah. I busted my ass. And and you when you start learning the law and you start learning how they pr- provoke you and make you think like you're not tough enough, if you stand up for yourself and say, wait a minute, this thing says it's supposed to be here then, and you want me to pick it up then, that means that I'm going to have to do this to get it there, and that's not safe. The hot and that's your, this- that magic word safe mm-hmm. is what you need to use more often, and you, you need to get your calculator out more often and plan this load out for all of the crap that's going to could possibly occur urban let's, traffic winter driving mountain driving let's let's talk about that hot load you know <laughs> that's that's the key word for a lot of these companies you know ltl companies mega carriers the hot load yo you mm-hmm. get it there but then another key word that we missing out on here too is is we got to get to that bag. That's that's the key word now. That's the, you know, back in the day when you guys came into it, shout out again to you for, for 25 years, man. When you came into it, it wasn't about, uh, it, it, the key word chasing the bag wasn't even a key word to you guys back then. That's the key word now. Everybody is, everybody is in this industry, is getting in this industry for the bag. We chasing the bag and all like that. But then when that bag, chase you when that bag mess around and have your brakes go out and you end up doing 85 85 down you know down the way and you can't freaking stop Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that that bag ain't no ain't no thing here's another comment um desiree um this young lady she says that she missed the story she didn't even know all of that you know, mm-hmm. and I, I'm about to I'm about to come in because see, a lot of you guys don't read past the story. Y'all just yeah. y'all just read y- y'all just read right there and just leave it alone. See me, I I go deeper than that. I, I want to know the bad story. I want to know if because you know I I don't want to just put my I don't want to be I don't want to assume anything or or anything like that. I want to know a little bit more. So mm-hmm. yeah, you. Did not know, but the comment was: she says she read that he was reckless driving eighty-five mm-hmm. in a forty-five. Mm-hmm. Come on now, yeah. the brakes went out, lady. Yeah, you you they you didn't see know. you you didn't see that part though, right? How is that? <laughs> how is that reckless driving? Well, yeah, you could consider that, but still, the brakes went out. Mm-hmm. He couldn't stop. He couldn't yeah. stop. It wasn't like he was doing 85 and a 45 uh, on his own. He couldn't stop. He just got off the mountain. He couldn't stop. He couldn't stop. He didn't even know what the what the what the off ramp was because he never drove in that area. He yeah. was in Texas. There's no there's no uh emergency road ramps in Texas. I drove yeah. through and I, I drove through and I drove through Texas the entire state, top to bottom, front to back. I, I never seen a a, a, a off ramp, a, a off ramp, ramp, a runaway yeah. truck ramp. Yeah. I, I they, see, I see the motherfuckers up in the northeast though. Yeah, they, they, they. I get really discouraged. I got to tell mm. you, I get really mm. discouraged mm. when I come on here and I see this kind of feedback because mm. these are people that are out on the highway and. They know it all, and they're going to have an argument with you about this Monday morning quarterbacking of what this driver did, but they don't want to take the time to to find out all of the aspects of this. I mean, this is a tragedy. 
everything about it was a tragedy mm-hmm. that he got sent on this low that he didn't know how, how to use this stuff. You know, I mean, th- I saw the video when it first happened because there was a guy that was doing a, uh, doing a, a YouTube, YouTube video was, and, and, yeah, he, and he flew it. right past him. I used that as my intro when yeah. I when I did the video. Yeah, that, uh, a I couple mean, of years it's ago. like wow, what what's going on there? But you know, I had a I had an incident up on Interstate Eight. I don't know if you ever been up there out of San Diego. Mm. I used to run plants back and forth across Interstate Ten from South Florida to San Diego. That's pretty much the easiest interstate stretch, longest stretch you could do, right? Mm-hmm. But when you get to Interstate 8, this really steep mountain pass to get over the mountains into San Diego. And when I was coming back, I stopped at the brake check area to play on my phone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I didn't really, you know, I, I didn't even brakes, know what was, I, what was it was the brake check area is about. You know, well, I knew what the brake check area is, but, you know, I'm guilty of rolling through it a lot of times myself and going, OK, they work. And then going over the side. Well, this particular time, I decided to stop because I needed to finish an email or text or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was only there maybe two or three minutes. And, you know, my brakes locked up up there. Mm. And when I couldn't move, I ended up being up there like 12 hours because nobody would come and get me because no one wanted to take the trailer down that mountain with the brakes locked up and they couldn't unlock them. Mm. And it was a man from El Centro who drove up at two in the morning. He didn't speak any English. A lady translated over the phone for me, and he 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 bypassed the line. And he, he they communicated to me, "I'm going to drive in front of you in my truck. We're going to go 20 miles an hour how, all the way down." How, how and, about how about this comment? How about this comment right here? He's an idiot. <laughs> oh yeah. God. Yeah. I, this is it, it's hard. It's really hard. I mean, there's days I'm like, I'm coming up. I'm getting off this. Page. I'm not going to try and help anyone anymore because these people just need to find out for themselves. You know, it's really hard. You're trying to help people understand this is a serious situation. Like, this is a serious situation. You know, they could have been avoided with training and communication and listening. Listening. And you're right. A lot of these people, they look at the headline and then they dog pile on. Mm-hmm. Just like they doing now, man. They don't read. They don't read anything. It, it, and it and looks like, it, it, and to be honest, it don't look like anybody is reading, you know, reading and mm-mm. taking the contents of your post. They just yeah. coming on there, glim, uh, glimming through and hurrying up to the comment section and just, and just comment on, 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 you know, just, just to be commenting, man. Just it's very don't frustrating. Do it's, it's, it's like a, Two people out of a hundred get it. And I guess, you know, you just got to hope that those two people read it. Now I'm one of those two people. I am a sponge for information from veterans. Mm -hmm. And when I have access to a veteran and I hear them talking about stuff that's, you know, wisdom, I'm like asking questions. I'm asking them questions about, I stuff that I have in the back file that I've been waiting for somebody to teach me about because I got rushed through training too. And I wanted to be a good driver. I didn't want to just be a lady driver on social media that was on TV. That was not my, my, my purpose. I wanted to be a good, safe driver that you can feel confident knowing that I was driving in the truck next to you. Exactly. Desiree Woods, shout out to you. Thank you very much for coming on. The, the last yeah. uh the last thing uh here is uh the another young lady commented and she says something uh let me think. She says something to the other that the that the young man wonder why he got so many years is that he was he, he was about to walk away. Really? No, no, that's not true. How, how, how was he? How he was going to walk away from that? I mean, he luckily he he survived. You know what, though, to be He's honest, lucky he did survive. But oh my god! But I, I wait mean, a minute, that's right. Let's. I mean, yeah, he survived. It's a good thing that he was here. But 
what do you think he's thinking now? Do you, do oh, you think I he think he's destroyed inside. I think he, I mean, I've read some, I mean, he's in tear. He, he has to live with this for the rest of his life. But do you think, do, but do you think in his mind, of my, in his mind of all minds that he should have went that same day too? Instead of coming, instead uh, of surviving and ending up getting a hundred plus years mm. in jail. Well, the judge said that I read this morning that the judge said if they had a choice, they would not sentence him to that. But that's the law in their state. They have a mandatory sentence, but there is a possibility the district judge can reduce it. So the judge's hand was tied to a certain extent. And I think that people really did understand this case that at the end of the day, you're the one, your, your company gave you shitty equipment. Your company sent you to the mountains. You don't know how to drive in the mountains. You have the license. When you got the license, it says you understand if you do something, you're the one that got behind the wheel, just like a drunk driver. You're the one that got behind the wheel. That's why they can tie you down and take your blood to make you have a drug test right there. You agreed to that when you got a CDL. So that's sort of the thing. I, I hope that his sentence does get reduced, but lives are, are lives changed forever. Lost. His yeah. his lives, his life has changed forever. He's not a vicious villain, but he made some bad choices and hindsight's 2020. So the purpose of putting the post up is, is learn from other people's mistakes. Be wise enough to learn from other people's mistakes and learn your rights, know your rights, know that there's cases of drivers refusing to run under the surface transportation assistance act. And they won big settlements because they stood up for themselves. And they said, I'm not doing this. I'm sick. This is bad equipment. This is bad weather. Whatever it is, it's because of safety. I'm not doing it. So that's, that's sort of, if there's two or three people to get this from the post that I made, that's good. But yeah, it definitely is scourging to see how many. And I really appreciate you calling me because not I'm glad I'm not the only one that looks at that and is like, what in the fuck? Well, again, shout out to the She Trucking Trucking Group. I, I, I am the one with the unpopular opinion. You know, they, you know, ladies, I, I get you, ladies. I rock with you, ladies. I'm, I'm for you, ladies. But I'm not going to come here and coddle you. I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. That's 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 for your shit for your sister truckers I, i'm gonna come here and tell you the real yeah yo your sisters are oh, here we're gonna give you the hug and rainbow and yeah. no no i'm here yeah. to give you the storm yeah because I that's what you guys gonna you know, need to know y'all gonna need to know the storm yeah i Be think a lot of we need more people like you to do that we have turned a corner somewhat for for some of the stuff but there needs to be more people that chime in with the tough love stuff because um, you know, you are being supported when somebody tells you the truth mm -hmm. <laughs> about safety. And and but you know what though, when I come in and do that, no, I'm I'm considered a hater. I'm I'm a hater. <laughs> but they they love well, to use, they they love to use that word against me. Oh, you you just you just a hater. And she you know she she didn't come in here and, and ask for all that negativity. Well, no, it's not negativity. If I if if I I am a uh, a number one professional truck driver, been doing it for six years. I've been yeah. in some situations. Yeah. I've been in I've been in some situations more so than you guys ever probably will be. Mm-hmm. So I think my experience or my experience on the dumbass and let's be honest, dumbass comments that you guys be putting in the group. Yeah, you you need somebody to come back in and 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 debunk that shit. You do, I agree one hundred percent. And there needs to be more. And I'll, I'll, let me, you know, mob rule. It's I see if you get if you let it get if you let the one loler. Uh, take over the thread, 
Mm-hmm. Everybody jumps on with that. But if you if you get two or three people that go back and go, no, this is the, the right way, it, you can turn it mm-hmm. the other direction. So you do have to kind of stand together with that. That's why we don't have a lot of conversation over on our my page, because when I first started my page, we get these people come over with that, you know, Nuff said, been there, done that. Let it do, you know, they just try to stir up some, you know, not dumb conversation. And um, we had to like reel it in like really quick because it goes, spins out of control. And then you let the people take over that don't know what the hell they're talking about. But there's, there's, there's a large percentage of people that aren't commenting and all that are reading that Mm -hmm. and they're going to follow the line that it goes. So if you let, if you let these people take over the thread that are giving all the misinformation, the silent ones back there in the corner reading all this, they're like, Oh, that's the way that it should go. That's why it's really important for people like you, people like me, people, Brianna coming into the thread and saying, no, this is true this is, you know, this is the professional driver way. And this is a professional driver page. That's what's up, man. Shout out to Desiree Moore. I mean, Desiree Wood. Uh, and Desiree shout Wood. out. Oh, I know. Sheree I was in Sheree Moore, Sheree Woods. <laughs> and uh, shout out to the She Trucking Trucking Group, man. I mean, you know, hopefully you guys, you know, there there are some real true uh, experienced lady drivers in here that really know what they're talking about. You know, it just hopefully that's maybe one or two or maybe three of you guys will take heed of the advice and and maybe some of the conversations that is Mm -hmm. given in this group, man. uh, Desiree, thank you very much for showing up, man. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I know you're busy with your little dog over there and uh, and down in Las Vegas of all places. We will check back in again soon. Okay. All right. You be safe out there. I will. You too now. Okay. Take care.